In the heat of the North African desert, shifting sands and strategic uncertainties of World War II, a formidable figure emerged to shape the course of military history. In 1941, General Erwin Rommel, a brilliant and audacious German commander, arrived in Tripoli, the Libyan capital, to take charge of the Afrika Corps. The theatre of war in North Africa was about to witness a dramatic transformation as Rommel, known as the Desert Fox, assumed command. However, it won't take him long time. In three years he will meet tragic end. Berwin Rommel was born in 1891 in the town of Heidenheim, about 80 kilometres east of Stuttgart. Unlike other future generals, he did not come from a rich family. However, he is clear about his future from the start. At the age of 11, he enters a military school, and when he is 23, the First World War begins. With incredible bravery, he commands the Infantry Corps and receives the Paul Emerit Award from the First World War. After World War I, Erwin Rommel continued his military career and also engaged in writing during the post-war period. He was married to Lucia Maria Mollen, and together they had only one son, Manfred Rommel, who would later become a prominent political figure in Germany. Erwin still serves in the army and, following his father's example, teaches at military schools in Dresden or Potsdam, where he also publishes his war memoirs. The Infantry Attacks, it is a bestseller which even Adolf Hitler will read. Sympathies of these men are on both sides. He takes Hitler's rise to power with pleasure as a means of restoring Germany's power. In September 1938, he is offered the command of a special unit that secure Hitler's security on the road. Rommel's first trip is so to the occupied Czech Republic in 1938. Erwin Rommel assists in the attack on Poland, he is fascinated by how German tanks quickly occupied of the country. He spends his whole life commanding infantry. He asks Hitler to give him command of a tank division during the next operation. When the attack on France begins in May 1940, Rommel's 7th Panzer Division joined the fight in an unpredictable way. Ignoring his orders to stop progress and urge caution, he constantly moved at the head of the German attack, or even well ahead of it. He penetrated deep into any territory without the assurance of flank or real cover, relying on the speed of his advance. The French command often had no idea where his division was and where it would strike. Earning his division, the nickname of the Ghost Division, after the conquest of France, Rommel have another task. Italian ally Mussolini decided to invade Egypt from Libya to cut supplies coming from Suez Canal, but the British recovered from the invasion and pushed their Italian troops back to Libya. His task will be to stop the retreat of the Italian troops and stick to active defensive tactics. At least that's what the General Staff's order sounded like, but Hitler gave him a much broader mandate. In February, he arrived in Africa, and in March British soldiers stopped offensive that they could send forces to Greece. In March, Rommel, who still did not have the full capacity of his forces at the front, launched a completely unexpected offensive. Thanks to radio intercepts, led by relatively weak forces, Rommel's strike grew to unimaginable proportions, sweeping away the advancing British forces and his advance stopped at the borders of Egypt. However, Rommel had one serious problem. Although his front forces were at the borders of Egypt, behind them remained Tobruk, which the British held with very large amount of forces. Rommel launched several very poorly planned attacks on it, costing him many men without much effect. His advanced units suffered from complicated supply, and Tobruk in British hands make this problem worse. It will take Rommel less than 400 days before Tobruk surrenders to him. His greatest victory is moving the front to Cairo. At the age of 50, he is named the Field Marshal in German history, and propaganda makes him the biggest star of the Wehrmacht. He also receives glory from his enemies when he conducts war according to the old conventions and treats Allied soldiers well. In 1942, the Americans landed in Algeria and Morocco. It is their first deployment on this side of the Atlantic in World War II, similar to 1917. So Rommel go on one of his biggest and most effective retreats of his time. He withdraws his corps from Egypt to Tunisia, where he feels that he will be able to defend himself better against the advancing allies. Says Rommel then discovers that there is no more help and asks Hitler to retreat to Europe. Hitler refuses and sends him on vacation. The remaining of the Afrika Corps surrender to the Allies. In 1943, Rommel was given the task of overseeing the construction of the defensive Atlantic Wall, and on 15 January 1944, he became commander of Army Group B, 
which now included the 7th and 15th armies facing the Allied invasion of the French coast. Under his supervision, there was a significant increase in the intensity of building fortifications, and Rommel personally created several types of barriers, roadblocks and mines, which began to be deployed on the coast. However, his work pointed to numerical and qualification deficiencies in the units that were supposed to build the ramparts and a lack of material. Also for these reasons, it was still not prepared during the Allied invasion. During the landings of Allies on June 6, 1944, Rommel was visiting his family, so he could not directly intervene in the fighting. On July 17, 1944, his car was attacked by a British fighter during one of the trips near the front. Rommel suffered numerous severe injuries, including multiple skull fractures, an eye injury, and a concussion. On July 20, 1944, Hitler was assassinated. Hitler survives and starts interrogating everyone. It was discovered that the Chief of Staff of Army Group B General Doctor, Heinz Speidel, was a participant in the coup against Adolf Hitler and during the third Gestapo interrogation of another person. It was revealed that they had once discussed with Rommel about political solution of the war during July. Adolf Hitler, supported in his fears by his secretary Martin Bormann, suspected that Rommel was also a participant in the coup. The maximum that could be proven to him is that he knew about the coup, but he didn't say anything to anyone. Convinced that he was part of the coup, Hitler sent his lieutenants to him, who gave him the choice of either a trial or committing suicide to avoid trial. In order to prevent the negative effects on his family, if he was convicted of high treason, he committed suicide with a cyanide capsule on October 14, 1944. Officially, the cause of death was given as a heart attack caused by the effects of the wounds of 17, July 1944, and Rommel was given a state funeral. Rommel is considered one of the most capable tacticians of the Second World War and is ranked among the best tank commanders of all time. However, his assessment as a strategist is much more contradictory. A highly unfavourable assessment of his strategic abilities comes mainly from the pen of a number of high-ranking German officers, who often emphasise that he was never meant to be anything more than a division commander. They criticised his rise, which they said was due more to propaganda and good relations with Goebbels and Hitler than to combat results and the lack of advanced military training, which they said was most evident in the inability to recognise the increasing importance of logistical constraints to the conduct of war operations. They also resented the fact that Rommel, while in the leader's favour, repeatedly bypassed them and dealt directly with him. His co-workers and superiors have repeatedly criticised his frequent stays in the front line, although encouraging the morale of the units. But due to the limited possibilities of connection often preventing effective communication between him and his staff, and thus a number of important decisions within Rommel's battles in the desert, were thus the work of his subordinates acting on their own initiative. He was also criticised for his inability and unwillingness to cooperate with other units and commanders, and for ignoring and circumventing the orders of his superiors. A clear picture of Rommel's strategic abilities did not even give a dispute about how to face the Normandy landings. Rommel correctly estimated the devastating consequences of Allied air superiority. It would be no different if Rundstedt's plan was fully implemented. Even Rommel's plan, according to experts, would not have brought a chance for victory. The landing could not be repulsed under the current balance of forces. So both sides were right when they claimed that a competing plan could not succeed. There is at least a consensus among historians that the compromise created by Hitler was the worst possible option, which was also accompanied by a limitation of the powers of both commanders. Beyond the battles and victories, Rommel's legacy teaches us the importance of leading with integrity, empathy and a profound sense of duty. In the quiet moments of reflection, we are reminded that Rommel's story is not just about the triumphs etched in history, but also about the humanity that resonates within his military brilliance. His legacy challenges us to consider the profound impact a single individual can have on the course of history and the lives of those around them. As the echoes of Rommel's footsteps fade into the sands of time, his legacy remains a testament to the power of resilience, innovation and unwavering commitment. Through the lens of history, we see not just a military commander, but a man who faced the tumultuous currents of war with unmatched fortitude and an unyielding dedication to his principles. In honouring Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, we pay tribute to a leader who left an indelible mark on the world, reminding us that even in the midst of chaos, 
there exists the potential for greatness. As we strive for our own victories, may we draw inspiration from the Desert Fox's enduring legacy and strive to make our own mark on the shifting sands.